A while ago, I was visiting a client who was having problems using TDD. It takes over half an hour to run our tests, he said. You're not doing TDD, I said. In order for your tests to be valuable, they have to run fast within a few seconds or developers will stop running your tests frequently. But how do I make them run fast, he asked. Just connecting to the database takes over 30 seconds. So I showed him a technique called dependency injection that allows him to insert mock objects instead of using the database. You don't have to test the database, I said. Remember, a test should test everything not under its control. So you should mock out dependencies and get them under your control. Another problem that they were having, which I hear a lot lately, is that their tests seem to be more of a burden than a help. It'll take a day to refactor our code and probably three days to refactor our tests, he said to me. This problem stems from the fact that I think people misunderstand what TDD really is. TDD is not about doing QA. QA is about ensuring something works as expected. TDD is about expressing the intention of a system using assertions. This is valuable to QA in that it gives us regression testing so we don't have to do it manually. But it's, it really isn't a full set of QA testing. It doesn't think about other things that go, go wrong. TDD is, when it's done well, is really about articulating the behavior that we want to create through assertions. And the benefit of the tests that we get when we do TDD in this way is that it allows us to um, make changes to the implementation of our code, refactor our code without breaking. If we write tests against implementation, then when we change the implementation in the future, if we ever need to, then those tests will break. So they're not that useful in the sense of helping us refactor, but they are useful at times uh, for QA and for having the assurance that things work the way they intend to. So I keep two categories of tests and I literally separate them out into two separate folders. One I call red tests, which are my QA tests. Therefore, validating that the code works the way they're supposed to work. And they reach into implementation sometimes. I have a folder I call green tests. And my green tests are the tests that I write when I'm doing TDD. And these are tests that essentially are focused on acceptance criteria. So you could think of them as a form of BDD or behavior-driven development or acceptance test-driven development. These are the best tests to have because, as I say, they help us when we go to refactor our code because they ensure that the behavior of the system is the way we want it to be, even though we change its implementation. However, sometimes we don't feel so easy having these high-level tests only. I always feel much more comfortable driving down and being able to test things at a lower level sometimes. And that's where the QA testing comes in, red tests come in. Most developers that I meet believe that code quality is a good thing. So they strive to write high quality code and their code is always clean, but tests are also code. And I often see poor code quality propagate in tests. For example, I've seen the same developers who carefully remove redundancy in their production code, write a huge number of redundant tests. They say, well, we want to have 100% code coverage. And so what they actually are doing is covering the same code multiple times. If our code coverage tools actually told us how much code coverage we had, it wouldn't be, you know, 60 or 80% coverage. It would be more like 800% or 1100% code coverage because many lines of code are covered multiple times, I see, because people write redundant tests or write tests that cover too much. We only want to write tests against the behavior that we want to validate. And I think of testing now in a very different way than I thought of, you know, when I started out. I don't think of doing unit tests as testing a piece of code. I think about validating behaviors. These tests become much more valuable. And I'm able to segregate and understand and validate a system more readily when I build small tests around small behaviors in the system that I'm creating. I originally started out doing this with the intention that I'd have to write a lot more, you know, integration tests because each little piece 
could be validated, but I want to see how things would work when I put them all together. What I found is that the better I get at unit testing and testing small behaviors, the less I find a need to write integration and system tests because the system tends to work. When I test all the pieces in aggregate, the system tends to work well. I still wired together a couple of system tests just to prove it in many situations, but um, what I find is that they're not needed, which is a really powerful thing because when I can test things at the unit level, at the smallest level, the permutations and combinations between variations don't show up. And so I write far fewer tests and I create validation when the system is small, when the components are simple. So it's more straightforward to validate. I find this is a really powerful way to build enterprise systems. If you're building a small program, you probably don't need to think about methodologies like this, but if you're building enterprise software, if you're building stuff that's complex, then sorting these things out, thinking about how to validate the little pieces becomes really important. What do you think? I'd love to hear your thoughts. Please share your comments below. When have you found tests to be most useful? Have you found them to ever be a burden when you go to change your design? For most developers, I think they find it challenging because of the things that we're talking about here. But what I have found is that when we learn how to do it well, it can be incredibly valuable as a source of insight into building good code. In summary, tests are code too, and their quality should be kept high. Each intention in the system should be expressed once in a test, and no other test should fail for the same reason. Let's continue with this conversation. And please check out some more videos. Until next time, happy coding.